flashback. It's 2011. Nostalgia pandering does not yet control society. I get a Blackberry for my 14th birthday and immediately use it to watch an unhealthy amount of YouTube. And what's this? A Sonic trailer on my birthday? Pregnant silence. Sonic runs through Green Hill Zone to stop the evil cartel that's been storing their cocaine there. He runs through a loop, Kobe's off a ramp, and... Ah! There's two Sonics! It's the Sonic before he was the Sonic, when he had the cuter proportions and the more cartoonish eyes and... Better games! I mean, come on, the gameplay of the 2D games in a 3D environment? There's no way they could screw that up. Twice, but they did. Remember that boring ass speech I gave last time about the reward of speed and how mapping go fast to a button was a bad idea? Well, they did. You might say, yeah, they used the quote unquote boost formula for the modern stages, but there's no way they made the same mistake for the classic stages. Well, it did! See, during classic Sonic stages, if you press what would be the boost button, Sonic immediately stops on a dime and charges a spin dash to max. Something that was already too easy to do. Oh, and they made the spin dash faster than Sonic's top speed, completely boinked the concept of gaining speed rolling down a hill, and to top it off, they turned this beautiful, precious boy into this generic brand imposter. This generic brand, Scott the Waz, will not stand for this transgression, so today we'll be answering the question, can you beat Sonic Generations without boosting or spin dashing? The rules! Spin dashing during classic stages is defined as pressing the X button or the down plus jump equivalent to rev up and then releasing the button to take off in a burst of speed. Boosting during modern stages is defined as pressing the X button, depleting the boost gauge, and well, boosting. And finally, we must complete every main act, rival, and boss battle and reach the credits to complete the challenge. Oh, and I traded out old Lightning Larry Santiago with a much better Sonic 2 inspired model. For your viewing pleasure. There is one more thing I want you to have. <gasps> Green Hill doesn't start our challenge off too sadistic. Less than a minute in and we can't gain enough speed to run through this loop. I complained in the last video about spin dashing making loops too easy, but at least it was possible to just run full speed and get through it. Now Sonic's top running speed is so slow that spin dashing is required to get through some loops. We drop below instead and sashay our way along the bottom route and onto the signpost. We load up act two and take a deep breath to prepare for the torment that will emerge from trying to slug our way through the boost stages without boost, and it's actually kind of fun? There's some bullshit enemy placements that go untelegraphed since the game assumes we're boosting, but other than that, Sonic's top speed is still decent, and the added time we have to react to upcoming obstacles means we can get a more controlled flow going much easier. And all of that gets flushed down the toilet when we begin Chemical Plant. After the slide into what the US government calls safe drinking water, a couple springs launch us onto a platform where we suffer the return of my favorite level obstacles half pipes with no way to build up enough speed to bisexual run up this wall we have no choice but to restart the level and avoid being flushed down the drain like the spider you find just before getting in the shower <laughs> we stomp through the beginning of the level and i miss the jump and fuck it up again i unalive myself and restart back at the checkpoint and i miss the jump again i unalive myself and restart back at the checkpoint and i miss the jump again i unalive myself and restart back at the checkpoint and i miss Make the jump, first try I might add, and oh look, that's the end of the level, yay! Act 2 plays with really not much difference from a normal playthrough. I almost get tripped up right at the end, but otherwise get through no problem. The Metal Sonic rival battle is quite a bit trickier than normal, as when you take damage, it can be hard to catch up to the front in time to damage Metal while he's vulnerable. Come here! Come here! And of course, doing the standard roll into him doesn't work, because well, well why would it? But with a little help from Kung Fu Hedgehog, that's our first rival battle clear. Sky Sanctuary has more of a focus on precise platforming and level gimmicks, cheap as they are, than the last two stages. So we only get tripped up by the game straight up hard locking. So after suffering the entire stage again, we like watch some ruins crumble or some shit and move on to act two, which is some of the most fun I've had playing Sonic Generations. Like act one, there's a lot more focused platforming going on and Without boosting into a wall every couple of seconds, you can actually build a satisfying flow. This is exactly what I think 3D Sonic games could capture. Something like Mirror's Edge, but at F1 speeds. Our first boss is Death Egg Robot from Sonic 2, which is about the lamest name you could call this thing. Like why not Egg Emperor Mark 1 or something? Wait a second, Egg Hawk, Egg Albatross. Was this a penguin? Anyway, Death Egg Robot is piss easy and doesn't really need the spin dash in the first place. So I really hope all the bosses are this easy. 
<laughs> Look, Speed Highway was fun, and I get that all of the stages and generations lineup are iconic, but did we really need five out of the nine levels in this game to be city-themed? No Lost World? No Kingdom Valley? Bitching aside, Speed Highway starts to incorporate the vertical half pipes a lot more often. But taking advantage of a well-placed spring and speed booster let us press on without too much frustration. We're going to boost in Act 2 makes some of the parkour level gimmicks break, but we're able to get through just enough to continue on and engage in civil disobedience. Fuck the police. Coming straight from Sonic Underground. How is it that I'm actually having more fun playing modern Sonic without boosting? Playing this way may make this more fun than actually playing Sonic Adventure. Ladies and gentlemen. City Escape. I am, dare I say, on the verge of having fun playing classic Sonic for a solid almost a minute, when we reach yet another godforsaken half-pipe wall. Clever turnaround and some mad hops later, and we're launched off the ramp into the first yay yay trucker chase. And this part isn't made any harder. I, I, I just suck. That was the most useless fucking... Um... Okay. Was released. Ah! Bro, I didn't even have a chance. I'm still getting ran up. Hey, bro, watch your jet. Watch your jet, bro. Watch your jet! Yeah, Large Marge is really railing me right now. You thought I was gonna do a cutaway to the Large Marge the Trucker scene from Pee Wee's Big Adventure, didn't ya? Yeah, no. I should have fuck you up. Ah! Ah! The world's most useless speed shoes later, and we're on to best fucking level ever. Which, uh, yeah, also plays pretty much like a casual playthrough. Turns out they were more concerned with the spectacle of a fucking semi driving along a wall to chase you to actually making this dangerous in any way. It hit me, but like, do I care? Nah. Speaking of trucks ruining everything, here comes Shadow to demolish this challenge like a truck barreling into a gas station in Grand Theft Auto V. In casual play, this battle is essentially a race. You collect rings, do tricks, and knock Shadow down to race after these purple orbs in order to end the fight. Can you see where this is going? I will have every last frame of this animation imprinted into my memory until I am a senile old man. The only saving grace of this fight even being possible is that, like Metal Sonic, Shadow is a cocky asshole. And, like in the race with Metal Sonic and CD, Shadow will slow down to match your speed if you're behind him and distress you with the occasional chaos spear. But if you attack Shadow or get too far ahead, he will boost past you and absolutely cuck you out of the purple orb. The trick is to approach the orb steadily, staying just behind Shadow and dodging his attack, and snag the orb from between his grubby little fingertips at the last second. You're also basically on a time limit to do so, as when you complete a lap of the track, the orb becomes unobtainable and then resets ahead of you both. What the fuck was that? 11 straight minutes of a single attempt later. Oh my god. 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 Yeah, baby. Let's fucking go. Then use the boost power. Let it be known, my hand is not on the boost button. I am not boosting. It doesn't doesn't count. How many fucking rings he has cuz we've taken fucking 20 years to beat this boss. Oh, suck my dear. You know, when I was planning this challenge, I thought Shadow was going to be by far the hardest and most annoying part of the entire game. Boy, was I wrong. Seaside Hill starts innocuous enough until we come to this cannon that is supposed to send you on a path through the loop. But with the momentum of being shot out of a cannon, Sonic can't even make it up the loop. And there's nothing to do but die in the water. We luckily find a different route and a different cannon. And conveniently, a loop that works as intended. That was jankier than actually playing Sonic Heroes. What the fuck? Act two lulls us into a false sense of security with some arguably fun platforming. Then, uh, hello? Oh, oh, what? Okay. Jump! Yeah. I really was kind of expecting perfect chaos to be impossible. During these sections where you're running on top of water, you're intended to be boosting. Otherwise you lose momentum until you fall into the water to your death. And the level is definitely not designed to try and compensate. But with some trial and error? Who fucking needs boost, dude? Not me. 
look at this kid. He's confident. He's suave. He is funkin'. He's completely oblivious to the horrors that await. Woo! Crisis City! I sure wish I could blow out a candle and erase my memory of this stage. Like, what is this creature? Iblis doesn't exist. The first few minutes come with mild frustration. Classic Sonic's physics are so fucking broken, dude. Okay, we'll call it mild to moderate, but any joy that remains turns to ash in my mouth as, you guessed it, another vertical wall halfpipe shows up. We are forced to put what little of our faith remains into the so far completely completely useless speed shoes power up. I take back everything I said. Speed shoes are cracked. That tiny diamond in the pile of Hershey squirts that is this stage turns out to be cubic zirconium though, as a missed jump just moments later leads to our first straight up soft lock. And we have to do absolutely all of the entire stage again. We just got past it. Let's go. Okay, we're good. A literal tornado of fire is the least of our worries as we finally make it through the worst stage yet. And what I would later realize is the easiest of the remaining levels. Oh, wait, I, I forgot about Act 2. You, you avoid some lava. Maybe homing attack a few guys. It's I. Rooftop run, though. <laughs> A uh, motherfucker! I'm incredibly bored of city levels by this point, so we trudge along tediously until a slip of the thumb later. We trudge along tediously again. This time remembering not to spin dash till gee whiz, another half pipe shows up! Cool. I'm dead inside. One merry frolic over the road many time traveled later. And this time we take an upper route that leads to a pair of speed shoes that we miss. Lucky for us, there is a not symbolic at all pit of despair nearby to send us back to the checkpoint so that we may this time. Okay. So we may this time grab the speed shoes and bisexual run up the wall. Though as we've come to expect, celebration is short lived as one frat party gone wrong in this clock tower later, we're stopped dead in our tracks by, oh look, a fucking half pipe. And with no enemies in this room, I have to redo six minutes of stage. I learned on the second go around of this roller coaster of emotions that these moving platforms are the only chance to get up to the next part, and you only get one shot as they fall after standing on them. Ah! I give up on rooftop run for the time being, but don't worry. We'll come back to it later. Oh yeah, and act two is fairly doable, but has a couple cheap tricks. Go, 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 go! Cool. Silver's the kid on the playground you bully because your big brother rooftop run beats the shit out of you every day after school. This fight is kind of like Metal Sonic in that sometimes it's harder to reach him to take the opportunity to get a hit in, but it's otherwise the same as usual. Nothing personal. <laughs> Do I have to talk about Planet Wiz? First of all, 16 seconds into Act 1, there's already a loop that's completely busted. This is stupid, dude. We break the roadblock because fuck the police. We get 95% of the way through the level when my day is absolutely ruined. Please! I don't even have the resolve to play through the stage again on stream. So like Rooftop Run, we put this one off to later and move on to Act 2. Which goes... Bruh! Quite well, I must say. Egg Dragoon is shockingly easy, despite some jank. Oh. I think that because it's technically possible to run out of boost, that the designers actually put some effort into making sure the game was beatable without it. While the spin dash, since you can use it at will, well, it just seems like they didn't test Classic Sonic at all, really. And, uh, Time Eater is, uh, Time Eater, I, I guess. There's no boost gauge, so am I, am I really boosting here? I mean, does anyone even really know what's going on in this boss fight? I just kind of press buttons like my girlfriend does in Mortal Kombat, and eventually the result screen comes up. Anyways, we still must go once more into the fray with rooftop run and planet wisp shouts to ike the bot in the discord shameless plug it showed me the proper way to make the nightmare jump if you pause on the smaller platform for just a moment before it falls a frat boy flies in and you can leapfrog his ass to the platform you take a spring up to the clock face and all that's left to do is jump in the sin and i missed it and i'm in this weird ball state and up oh, i fell through the floor and soft locked this is either groundhog day 
or purgatory. The things I do for content. I literally never want to play this stage again for as long as I live, but we do eventually get through it again and get back to the clock face again just to jump in the center and find they make you spin dash. You know, no, it, it doesn't count. You can't do it by pressing down and jump. You don't take off in a burst of speed afterwards. I played this entire fucking level 73 times. You can't take this away from me. Rooftop run is done. We did it. Finally, there's Planet Wisp. More like Planet Crisp $5 bill to whoever will beat the stage for me. No one, okay. We get back to the ramp we got bodied by earlier and backtrack a little in the stage to look for a spike wisp to scale the wall. But it turns out the door to the last spike wisp locked behind us. And I hit the checkpoint. So guess who gets to do it again? Another six minutes of riveting classic Sonic gameplay later and we let our wisp run out before going through the door and we take one with us this time. We put my genius plan into action and clear the last unscalable half pipe in Sonic Generations and immediately fall through the floor in soft lock. I'm in hell. By the mercy of Takashi Izuka, we're able to return to that part of the level in just under three minutes. We use the wisp to clear the wall, wait for it to expire before proceeding, and finally make it to the signpost and prove once and for all that you can beat Sonic Generations without spin dashing or boosting. I wonder if a challenge like this could be fun and mentally anguishing. If we did something like it in an actually good Sonic, oh hey, I made a video called Can You Beat Sonic Origins Without the Spin Dash? You should watch that too. Oh, and check us out on Twitch. The link is in the description. We're gonna be streaming Sonic Frontiers on launch day.